here are important guidelines to keep in mind as you embrace the challenges of online classes. 1. Set up a good working space. It is important that the place is quiet, clear and free from distractions. 2. Make yourself look good online. Wear clothes the way you do when you go to school for in-person classes. 3. Have a respectful tone. When communicating with your teachers and classmates, observe a certain level of formality. Use respectful greetings and signatures like Good morning, Mr. Dow, Hi, Ms. Taylor, Please and Thank you. 4. Be kind and be professional. Make it a point to be respectful in your comments even if you disagree with others. Conduct yourself in an online class with the same respect, politeness, and professionalism that you would exhibit in a real-life classroom. 5. Properly use your webcam and microphone. It's good to show your face to give the impression that you're actively engaged with the lesson. Turn your microphone off when your teacher or others are speaking. This will eliminate background noise that can be distracting. 6. Properly use the chat box. Don't post irrelevant remarks. Instead, use the chat box to clarify misconceptions or share great ideas you have about the topic at hand. Don't yell by typing in all caps. In most situations, typing in all caps is perceived as inappropriate. 7. Always make an effort to use proper punctuation, spelling, and grammar. Observing these ensures clear expression of your thoughts or ideas. 8. Make sure to submit your assignments the proper way. Knowing how to properly submit your work online is key to your success as an online student. 9. Take time to read. When asked to comment on a post, take some time to read through each of the previous discussion post responses before writing your own response. And 10. Think before you type. What you share in an online classroom becomes part of a digital record. I hope that you observe these guidelines to help you in your online learning. May you have a wonderful school year! Oh, a happy and blessed day, class. How's your day going? I hope you'll find everything today well. I'm Sir Aaron John Cortez, your English teacher. Today, I'll take you to the world of fun and excitement as we go along to our learning journey. So, fasten your seatbelts. In this learning session, all you need to do is to sit and watch as we gradually unfold all the learning tasks which you will surely enjoy while learning at the same time. Module 1 has something to do with using grammatical signals in developing ideas. At the end of this module, you are expected to First, recognize signal words and phrases. Second, use appropriate grammatical signals in developing ideas. So what are you waiting for? Get hold on your week 1 module, paper, notebook, and pen. Together, we will unravel all these learning tasks which you will surely enjoy 
while at the same time learning. For your pre-assessment, you're just going to choose the correct words or phrases to complete the sentence. Write the letter of the correct answers on your answer sheets. You will be given one minute to accomplish this task. And your timer starts now. Okay, time's up. Let us now evaluate your answer for your pre-assessment. The following are the answers for your pre-assessment. Good job! I'm glad that you made it. Imagine traveling to an unfamiliar place without road signs. Chances are, it will take you a longer time to reach your destination. This is because without road signs, you are clueless as to where you are headed to. In writing, the road signs are called grammatical signals. They assist the readers to move from one idea to another. They introduce readers as to what is expected of the ideas of the writers. They are used to signal relationship between ideas in your writing. Let us now refresh our ideas about the previous topic. For what's in, read the sentences carefully and check if the sentences have parallel structures. On the blank, put a check if the structure is parallel and put a cross if it is not. Write your answers on your answer sheets. Again, you will be given another minute to accomplish this activity. And your timer starts now. Time's up. Let us now check your answers. So here are the answers for activity one. Good job, class. You are absolutely fantastic. It is now time to do our initial task. For what's new, you're just going to read the story below. Then, Answer the questions that follow. Write your answers on your answer sheet. Again, you will be given one minute to accomplish this task. And your timer starts now.
The answers may vary. That's why evaluation and checking will be done right after this video. Fantastic! High five for a job well done! When it comes to reducing the spread of COVID-19, we all have a role to play. By staying vigilant and following a few important tips, we'll stay safe together. Proper hand hygiene and not touching your face are critical. Wash your hands often with soap and water, especially after you've been in a public place. If soap and water are not available, use a hand sanitizer. Another critical but simple safety guideline is social distancing. Set an example by not gathering in groups or in crowded places and keep a minimum of six feet away from others when in public. You should also stay vigilant by cleaning and disinfecting your home regularly, especially frequently touched surfaces. For example, objects like doorknobs, light switches, and faucets, or surfaces like countertops, tables, and desks, and even technology like your phone, keyboards, and remote controls. Remember that following these universal guidelines and reminding your friends and families to do the same will lessen the impact and spread of COVID-19. It is now time to learn more about grammatical signals. It says here, grammatical signals are writing devices that serve to maintain the text coherence. According to Saraka of 1988, they signal the relationship between new sentences and the one before it, and they are also important writing devices in text constructions. They can be divided into two types. First one is the sentence connectors. Second, we have the clause connectors. Under the clause connectors, we have the general to particular, claim and counterclaim, problem solution, compare and contrast, and for the last one, we have cost and effect. For the first one, we have the sentence connectors. These are used to link two sentences using grammatical signals or semicolon. Again, we are linking the two sentences using grammatical signals or semicolon. For example, our raw sentence is this. James already knows the title of the song. He downloaded its lyrics. For us to connect the ideas of these two sentences, we are going to use the punctuation mark, comma, or semicolon. And it goes like this. James already knows the title of the song. Semicolon. He downloaded its lyrics. Another example. James already knows the title of the song, comma, so he downloaded its lyrics. For the second one, we have the clause connectors. Clause connectors are used to connect two clauses to form a sentence. They are joined by a comma. For instance, Kim's parents will be able to attend the PTA meeting. They will be a little bit late. For us to connect the idea of these two clauses, we are going to use the grammatical signal. And it goes like this. Although Kim's parents will be able to attend the PTA meeting, they will be a little bit late. Remember, class, that the word that we underline in the given example is what we call the grammatical signal. Grammatical signal may differ according to the development of the idea that the writer wants. The following examples illustrate the appropriate use of grammatical signals in combining sentences. For letter A, we have general to particular. This uses specific details in writing where a topic sentence or a general idea is followed by the supporting details. For instance, we have the topic sentence. The color of the metal changes when its temperature changes. For the supporting details, when metals become very hot, it begins to glow. First, a metal will glow a dull red color. Then, when the metals become hotter, it changes to a bright red hot. At higher temperatures, it becomes yellow and finally white. Just bear in mind that the topic sentence is usually found at the beginning of the sentence. 
the sentences that come after it are what we call supporting or specific details. Now, the following words are what we call the signal words that help the writers with the flow of the idea. Word signals for general to particular are the following. We have first, second, third. First of all, before, next, last, or lastly, now, then, after that, and finally. Below are the examples on how we use the following words in the sentence. For letter B, we have the claim and counterclaim. The word claim refers to your opinion about something based on what you know or what you have studied. For instance, succulents are just easy to take care of because they can survive even only a little amount of water supply. Also, they can be left any time of the day under the sun. Meanwhile, the word counterclaim is something that contradicts the claim. It further challenges the opinion. For example, while majority have found out that the succulents are just easy to take care of, some still think that they have to exert more effort in taking care of them. Yes, they can be given only a little amount of water. However, one should also be careful not to put water on their leaves or else they will turn yellow. Not all succulents want to be placed under the sun. In fact, some just want to be in the bright shaded area. Word signals used in making counterclaims are the following. For letter C, we have the problem solution. This provides corresponding remedy to a conflict. This allows the writer to think of the possible solutions to a certain problem being encountered in everyday life. Word signals used for the problem solutions are the following. Also, below we have the following examples on how we use these phrases into sentence. Letter D, compare and contrast. When writers compare, they show similarities between two subjects. And when they contrast, the differences between two subjects are featured. This manner of idea development exposes not the obvious, but the little of the differences or the unpredicted similarities of things. The following are the examples of compare and contrast about face-to-face -face learning versus modular or distance learning. For letter E, we have the continuation signals. These signals can tell that the writer's idea is going to continue in the same direction. Information related to the idea presented is added whenever these signals are used. For instance, South Korea is known as the land of the morning calm because of its picturesque landscape. Moreover, it boasts of its captivating mountain, clear waters, and serenity especially in the morning. Word signals that add to the ideas are the following. For the last part, we have the cost and effect. In simple words, a cost is the reason why something happens and the effect is the result of that action. When an author gives reasons why something happened, he or she is explaining what cost and effect. They can be written as causes and effects or as effects and causes. Signal words for cost and effect are the following.
And that's all for today's discussion. I hope you were able to jot down all the necessary information that we will be needing for the next task. It's now time to cultivate our knowledge more about grammatical signals. For what's more, we will be answering the following activities. For independent activity 1, you're going to read and analyze the following sentences. Afterwards, list down five grammatical signals used in each sentence. Write your answer on your answer sheet. For independence activity number two, we're just going to read and analyze the following sentences. Then, rewrite them using grammatical signals to connect their ideas. Write your answers on your answer sheet. And for the last part of our activity under what's more, we have the independent activity number three. Complete the following sentences by adding a sentence or a clause. Afterwards, underline the connectors. Write your answers on your answer sheet. Item number one has been done for you to serve as an example. Again, you will be given one minute to accomplish this task. And your timer starts now. Time's up, you really amazed me with your ideas. Since your answers may vary from this activity, evaluation and checking of your answers will also be done right after this video. It is now time for us to reflect about our learning. What I have learned. Fill in the blanks with the correct answer. Write your answers on your answer sheet. You will be given one minute to answer these questions. And the timer starts now. Time's up! Let us now check your answers. The following are the answers for what I have learned. For number one, we have the grammatical signals. Number two, clause connectors. Number three, sentence connectors. Number four, counterclaim. And lastly, for number five, we have contrast. What a good job, class! You made it! Let us now put everything into action with the use of what I can do activity. Complete the following statements by choosing the correct grammatical signals. Write the letter of your correct answers on your answer sheet. You will be given one minute to accomplish this task. And your timer starts now.
Hold your pens up. We will reveal the answers. The following are the answers for what I can do. For number one, we have letter B. Number two, we have letter D. Number three, we have letter B. Number four, we have letter C. And for the last number, number five, we have letter C. What a good job. Keep it up. For our final assessment, you're just going to read the following sentences. Then, connect the ideas by using correct grammatical signals. Write your answers on your answer sheet. Item number one has been done for you to serve as an example. You will be given another minute to finish this task. And your timer starts now. Good job, class! Your answers may vary in this activity. That is why evaluation and checking will also be done right after this video. For your assignment, you're just going to do the additional activities. Write a short dialogue with at least 5 to 10 exchanges using 5 appropriate grammatical signals. Choose one from the given topics below. Number 1. Observing social distancing and health protocols. Number two, modular learning versus face-to-face -face learning. For number three, how to be productive during home quarantine. You will be graded using the following rubrics. And that's all for today. I hope you learn and enjoy a lot about this session. Thank you for your cooperation. Till next time, bye!